Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. Today is September 9. Today in our daily Bible reading, we continue to read from the book of Job. Now this is a very difficult and a very challenging book because basically, if you will allow my summation, the book of Job asks the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Or why do good people suffer? Job, we're told in yesterday's reading, is an upright man. He is a blameless man. He is one who does things that are good and holy and righteous, and yet he is suffering. He has lost everything he has, and he has sores all over his body, and he's wondering, as many of us would as well, where is God? Why would God allow such things to happen to me? Job is so miserable, we saw at the end of yesterday's reading, that he wishes he had never even been born. But he is surrounded now by three friends who've come to share in his misery and try to encourage him and lift his spirits. And we hear from the first of his three friends in today's reading. This is a friend by the name of Eliphaz. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, If someone ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? But who can keep from speaking? Think how you have instructed many. But now trouble comes to you and you are discouraged. It strikes you and you are dismayed. Should not your piety be your confidence and your blameless ways your hope? In other words, Eliphaz is saying to Job, you have always been good about encouraging others who are discouraged. Why not listen to your own advice, your own words of counsel, when you are the one who, have, who has been beaten down by life? Consider now who being innocent has ever perished. Where were the upright ever destroyed? As I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. In other words, what goes around comes around. It's what Eliphaz is saying. And so if you're doing right, then you will not suffer is kind of the conclusion that he at least is hinting at. Can a mortal be more righteous than God, he asks? Can a man be more pure than his maker? If God places no trust in his servants, if he charges his angels with error, how much more those who live in houses of clay, whose foundations are in the dust, who are crushed more readily than a moth? Eliphaz is saying, we're all human beings. We all have our flaws. And so, Job, there must be some flaw that you need to identify in your life. Everyone has trouble. And so Job, at Eliphaz's encouragement, needs to recognize the source of his trouble. But he understands that only God knows what's going on. But if it were I, he says, I would appeal to God. I would lay my cause before him. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. God knows all, in other words, Eliphaz is saying. So appeal to him for the answers to your questions. Blessed is the man whom God corrects, so do not despise the discipline of the Almighty, for he wounds, but he also binds up, he injures, but his hands also heal. We have examined this, and it is true, so hear it and apply it to yourself. God is disciplining you, is the conclusion that Eliphaz draws. But then Job is going to respond to these seeming words of counsel from his friend Eliphaz. Job replied, If only my anguish could be weighed and all my misery be placed on the scales, it would surely outweigh the sand of the seas. No, no wonder my words have been impetuous. The arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks in their poison. God's terrors are marshaled against me. Job is feeling like God has attacked him. God is against him, and he's confused because he doesn't know why God would attack him in this way. Oh, that I might have my request, Job says, that God would grant what I hope for, that God would be willing to just crush me, to let loose his hand and cut me off. Then I would still have this consolation my joy in unrelenting pain that I had not denied the words of the Holy One. What strength do I have that I should still have hope? What prospects that I should be patient? 
Job is wanting to die, as we saw in yesterday's reading. He's wanting to be finished with it. Have you ever felt that way? And Job is saying one of the reasons why he wishes God would just take his life is he doesn't trust himself. He's afraid that this anguish might cause him to sin. So he wants God to just put him out of his misery. Job goes on to say, a despairing man should have the devotion of his friends, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. But my brothers are as undependable as intermittent streams, as the streams that overflow when darkened by thawing ice and swollen with melting snow, but that cease to flow in the dry season and in the heat vanish from their channels. Now you too have proved to be of no help. You see something dreadful and are afraid. Job is saying, my friends are here. Eliphaz has reached out to me, but his words are not helping me. In fact, I feel like he's being critical of me. I, I feel like he's pushing me farther down rather than helping to lift me up. He says, teach me and I will be quiet. Show me where I have been wrong. How painful are honest words, but what do your arguments prove? But now be so kind as to look at me, he says. Would I lie to your face? Relent, do not be unjust. Reconsider, for my integrity is at stake. Is there any wickedness on my lips? Job is beside himself. He can't figure out why he's suffering. He says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and they come to an end without hope. Remember, O oh Lord, that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again. Listen to the words of despair that Job is speaking here. He says, therefore, I will not keep silent. I will speak out in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. I've got to find some relief, he says. I need some help in my time of trouble. He says, I despise my life. I would not live forever. Let me alone. My days have no meaning meaning. This is the epitome of despair, of longing, and Job is not getting the comfort he needs from Eliphaz. He asks some thought-provoking questions here, some theological kind of questions. He's speaking here to God. What is man that you make so much of him, that you give him so much attention, that you examine him every morning and test him every moment? Will you never look away from me or let me alone even for an instant? If I have sinned, what have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you made me your target? Have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my offenses and forgive my sins? For I will soon lie down in the dust. You will search for me, but I will be no more. I want us today to hear Job questioning God, questioning life, questioning his friends, because there are times in our own lives where we get discouraged, where we feel beaten down by life, when it seems that God is distant from us and we have the same kinds of thoughts, don't we? Where is God? Why won't he just forgive me? If I've sinned, if I've distanced myself from him, why doesn't he just forgive me? Why can't we fix what's broken? And yet sometimes, and even oftentimes, Life is not so easy. The questions are not so simple. The answers are certainly difficult to come by. And so life goes on and we have to figure out where we fall. We are, we claim to be people of faith, aren't we? Job's faith is being tested. Our faith is tested on a regular basis. And the question is, how will we stand up or will we stand isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I hope you have a blessed day.